Hi, my name is Adnan Hussain, and in this lesson, I'm going to go over two ways to create blend shapes in Houdini. One way is to just use the regular blend shape node in Houdini, and the other way is to create a point VOP, which will allow you to paint your blend shape. So the point VOP method was taught to me by a friend of mine named Matt Benson. So let's begin. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay down a geometry node. And within that geometry node, I'm just going to create a sphere. And so with that sphere, I'm going to change the primitive type to polygon mesh. And let's add some rows and some columns to it so we have some resolution to play with. And then I want to create an object for this sphere to blend shape into. And to do that, I'm just going to take this sphere and add a mountain sock to it. And it's basically just a noise. So then we can create a blend shape node. And on the one side, I'll plug in the sphere. And on the other side, I'll plug in the mountain. So you put those two together, and you can create a blend shape. So now I can simply manipulate this blend and blend between the sphere shape, which is the first connection I put in here, and the second state being the mountain, basically a sphere with noise on it. So the topology matches for both of these, so that's why you're able to blend shape them. So now let's say if I just want to blend shape some points. I don't want to blend shape the whole sphere. So for that, I'm going to create a group. I'll put that up here. And I can plug this output into both simply by dragging that. So this group, we can call it blend points. So the only way, place that the name really matters is in the group name within the node. But just to make it clear for myself, once you have a lot of nodes in your scene, I like to try to name the nodes so that it's easy to see what they are just by looking at them. So the group type is going to be points. So I want to create a group of points because that's what the blend shape is going to use to selectively blend. So let's go ahead and I've changed this selection tool to the lasso picking tool so that I can drag a lasso shape to select my points. And then I'll come over here to base group in my group node and select this arrow to the right of it. Now in this selection mode, you'll see at the bottom of the viewport, it says select geometry for base group parameter of group blend points, and then press enter when you're done. So basically, select the points that you want to be in the group, and then hit Enter when you're done. And what that's done is put the indices of each of these points into this group. And so here you go. If I visualize that, I can see which ones I selected. Okay, and then I can go back to my blend shape node and select that new group that I made, blend points. And now when I blend shape, it's only blend shaping the points that are in that group. Now I can also put an exclamation mark here, which says everything except this group. And in that case, when I blend shape, it blend shapes the inverse. It inverts your group, basically. So, I mean, it only blend shaped the points that were in the group, or in this case, all the points that were not in the group. But if you look at this, the transition area is very rough looking. So, in another program like Maya, I would simply use the 3D paint tools, and I could paint the influence of this blend shape. 
I don't know how to do that with a blend shape node within Houdini, but as I mentioned at the beginning, a colleague of mine, friend Matt Benson, was kind enough to show me a method for doing this using a point VOP. So that's the second method I'm going to show you now for creating a blend shape in Houdini. So for the second method, I'm going to put this blend shapes node on one side and we'll create a point VOP. And for the first input on this point VOP, I want the regular sphere with this group I created for points that we want to blend. And the second input is going to be the noised up version with the mountain sop. So we put that together. It does nothing. So we're going to go in and define what we want this point VOP to do. So the first thing we're going to do is create a vector to float. Now the vector we're converting is the color we're going to add, which is CD. CD is just the color of the object. And we're going to take one of the RGB uh, values, because it's grayscale, and we're going to plug that into a mix node. And so we don't want that as the input, we want that as a bias, which is basically like a mask that is going to be used to blend the other two inputs. Now the two inputs are the point vectors or the point positions of the sphere, the original sphere with the first input on this point VOP, and the second sphere with the mountain SOP applied as noise is going to be the second input on the mix. But in order to get just the point vector of that second input, we need to add another node, import point attribute, to tell it which attribute of that object we want to use. So we're going to take the result of that, put that in as input 2, and then output that to the point vector of our geometry, VOP output. So that's what we're outputting from this node. So right now the object is white, so the entire object was blend shaped. But I only want certain parts of it to be blend shaped. So let's add a color over here. So coming out of this group node, it's just the regular sphere, but we're going to color the whole thing black with this first color node. Then we'll add another color node. And we're going to apply this color node only to the blend points group. And see, it was able to read that group because that group is upstream in these connections here. We'll take these, and in this group, we're just painting those points white. And if we go back to our point VOP, we now have a blend shape being created by the point VOP that's respecting the group based on the color. But the transition is still very, very, very sharp. So that's easy to fix. We'll add an attribute blur after the color node. And if we leave it as is, the attribute that it's blurring initially by default is P. If I increase the blurring iterations, we can see that it's applying essentially a smoothing to the point positions of the entire object. Now the thing that we want to blur is actually the color or the CD attribute of the object. And now, if I increase blurring iterations, it's blurring the color. And you can see the effect of that by displaying the point VOP, and then you can change this value to kind of dial in how soft you want it to become. And now for this last method that I'm going to show, I'll use a paint node. So this is one more way to blend. 
So we'll create a an attribute paint. And I'm gonna plug in that group into the attribute paint. In this case, I'm not gonna bother using the group. So in fact, I could plug in the sphere straight into the attribute paint. And then we're gonna make a few changes here. So right now the attribute that it's painting is called mask and it's a float. So let's change that. Under attributes, we'll change the attribute name to CD, which is color. And we can change that to attribute type color. So So sometimes I'll put in like a black color before so everything is just black and then we'll paint on top of that the attribute paint. So let's go ahead and copy our point bot because that's still exactly the same. I'm just gonna copy and paste that. We'll leave mountain as the second input and we'll change the first input to this attribute paint. So now what I can do is with the point VOP being displayed, I can click on the attribute paint. And if you don't see this little um, paint handle show up, then you just click on this manipulator, show handle. And you can press shift and with your left mouse button drag to increase or decrease the size. So let's go back to our brush and we can look at the options here. It says left mouse button operation is paint. And if you press control at the same time, it'll smooth. Middle mouse button will paint and erase if you hold down control. So you have a bunch of options in here. And the foreground float value is one, the background is zero. So one being white, the background being zero. So middle mouse button will color the background in and left mouse button will color white. So let's go ahead and just paint in. And as you can see, since we're painting with the attribute paint, but looking at the end result of the point VOP, you can actually paint and see the results at the same time. So now let's press control on the left mouse button and just smooth out these edges. So I can smooth it out by painting. Or if I wanted to add just an overall blur to it, I could always add an attribute blur as I did using the group method before after this. So that's the thing that's really nice about Houdini is everything that you do is kind of like a building block and you can use those building blocks in different ways later interchangeably. So now let's use the middle mouse button and I'll paint in the background color, which is float value of zero, or in this case, black. And then I can paint in the blur. And so there you have it. Just using an attribute paint and the point VOP, I was able to interactively paint in my blend shape. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. And if you have any other methods for doing this, or if you have better ways of doing this, please feel free to add that in the comments too. And if you found it useful, feel free to subscribe and I'll try to add some more uh, tutorials like this. Thanks a lot. Bye.